Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday, February 28th, 2023 regular meeting of the Marple Newtown School Board. Uh, I'm going to call this meeting to order and acknowledge that the board just finished meeting in executive session to discuss personnel and legal matters. At this time, I'm going to ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Ms. Alberti. Mr. Bilker. Here. Mr. Desi. Here. Ms. Harvey. Here. Mr. Maloof. Here. Mr. McKenzie. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Ciano. Here. Ms. Tomasco. Here. Eight board members present this evening. Approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to accept the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Any alterations? Board discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Public comments, agenda items only. Ma'am, if you are going to make a comment, uh, would you please step up to the podium? Um, you have three minutes. Would you identify yourself and where you live? And then you're welcome to. And don't please turn the, um, the button on, on your microphone. Uh, my name is Justine. I'm a resident of Marple Township, along with my husband and our three daughters, two of which attend elementary school in the Marple Newtown School District, Russell specifically. Um, I have a few comments relating to the agenda as follows. Item number 11 on the agenda states several settlement agreements and tuition agreements regarding students whose needs could not, we could not meet in our district, where by law they are entitled to receive a free and appropriate public education. Um, and just a side comment on that, going forward, it might be helpful to eliminate acronyms that the public may not be privy to when posting the public agenda, such as FAPE which um, stands for Free and Appropriate Public Education. In previous years, Marple Newtown School District received upwards of $230,000 per school year in government assistance under Title I so that we could better serve our students who may be in need of these supplemental educational supports, such as the children specifically that we serve under the IDEA, which is the Individuals with Disabilities Act. I'm under the impression that we lost this assistance and going forward we will receive $0 to help fund our programming in this way. I was hoping to gain some clarification on why we lost this funding and how a district that claims to be extremely budget conscious might have let this happen. And for the public's information also with an item number 11, I would like to comment that these one-on-one <clears throat> -on -one special education systems, special education assistants that were hired are being paid a salary of $19,000 per year. This is public information. Um, following item number 14.02 states, Motion to approve and authorize payment of general fund bills in the amount of $1,968,629.58. Capital reserve fund bills in the amount of $249,252.26. Capital fund bills in the amount of $174,976.13. And food service bills in the amount of $345,979.09. .09. With the exception of the food service bills, which I think is obvious where that money goes to, um, this is a motion to approve a total of $2,738,837.06. And I'd like to know a breakdown of where these funds are being allocated from, as well as who's they're being paid to. Um, and I also just want to say that staff at the schools, I'm here in support of you guys. And my kids. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Are there any other um, agenda items that members of the public would like to comment on? You can come on up to the stand, and turn the mic on, let us know your name. And... It doesn't matter which order or what topic. Well, this is for agenda items only. Okay. There will be a time if there are non agenda items that you would like to comment on at the end of the meeting that you may approach the podium and have some time okay, as well. Okay, so I guess it is agenda items. Right, this is about that hazard pay. Is that an agenda item? I don't think so. No? Okay. All right. Well then. So but if you have a comment on hazard pay, you're welcome to, yeah, you're welcome to, if yeah. you can speak. Oh, at right. the end. Right. Okay, well then I'll, I'll Thank you. wait Thank till the end. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Anything else right now? 
Em? My name is Michelle Graham. Um, I just have a general question for you. Are you not going to respond at all to any of the questions or clarifying information that Justine wanted to receive? Well, um, I think the best time to respond, um, I mean, this is an opportunity for public comment, and what we do is we run through the agenda, and that's how the school district conducts business. And, then the, and, the, and the point of public comment is so the public has an opportunity to influence votes before they occur, and then afterwards, anything that, that is of interest to them. It is not really a question and answer session, although, of course, we take questions seriously. The best time for those questions, I think, for you, ma'am, and for anybody who has questions, would be to reach out to board directors after the meeting or to individual uh, administrators. I guess uh, I feel very frustrated with that because I have reached out to all of you. I've heard from Anthony a couple times. I've heard from Desiree about policy, but I, I haven't heard any answers to the questions. So I do think this is the forum to speak on it. And I would like you to address her questions. And I'm going to have non-agenda questions at the end that I'd also like to be addressed tonight. Okay, well, we'll get, we'll get to those when, Are when you they're going to respond to her? We're not going to respond to those right now, ma'am. We're not trying to pick a fight here. This is the, the way that our board handles business. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Number six, we are proud of our students and teachers. Thank you, Mr. Bilker. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Noelle Newton and Jen Cipollone for being named the Teacher of Excellence from the Franklin Mint Federal Credit Union. They were um, two school of our, there are two school counselors here we have, and uh, they're among 20 educators of excellence that were named across five different counties. Um, we also had nominees from Paxton Hollow, which, which was Michelle Lunn, Colbertson was Megan Noller, Warrell was Andrea Moak, and Russell was Jennifer Walsh. And um, they will be invited along with uh, Doug Kilo, our MNEA Teacher of the Year, to, we were waiting for this, uh, to hear about it. So now that we'll have all of the teachers come and be honored at an upcoming board meeting. I'd also like to congratulate uh, our art teacher from Loomis, Mrs. Trigone. Uh, along with the Loomis students, you can see their artwork on display in the boardroom. Last week we had a recognition event and the children were super excited to share their artwork, explain <coughs> their techniques. Uh, they were extremely articulate and um, it was a really great evening for families and the students. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Kane. Number seven, commendations? Uh, none this evening. Okay. Number eight, student representatives report. Good evening, everybody. Um, just a little recap on our school. So on Friday, February 17th, uh, Marple participated in their 10th annual lift up and it was a success. Uh, Marple girls swimming team celebrated their academic achievements by winning the Winter Roar Award with a team GPA of 3.91 and overall GPA for winter sports was 3.52. Um, Renaissance will be hosting an ice cream social on Thursday, March 2nd to celebrate students efforts in and out of the classroom. Marple's Minithon is this Friday, March 3rd and our theme is Candyland. This upcoming week is, week is Spirit Week. And then Marple students will be participating in Reading Across America Day this week by traveling to elementary schools and reading to elementary students. Um, these past couple weeks we've been wrapping up winter sports. Uh, hockey, I think, is the last team to wrap theirs up. Um, they had a playoff game for the Central League last night. Um, and then I believe that they're playing the Flyers Cup. So spring sports will also be starting up next week. So that's your lacrosse, boys and girls, baseball, softball, tennis, track for both boys and girls, um, amongst other clubs too. And then next Sunday, March 5th, is signing day uh, for Marple Newtown High School for all current 8th graders. So any 8th graders, they'll come down to the high school um, and they'll get to talk to athletes and representatives from those teams in order to get a better interest in those sports. And then on Tuesday, March 7th at 4 p.m., the school district will be hosting a ribbon ceremony at the new baseball fields, the lower fields, softball fields and such, and everybody's welcome to come. And certainly, um, all the athletes are certainly excited about getting those new fields. And then on March 16th, 17th, and 18th, Marple Newtown's PAC will be performing their spring musical, The Adams Family. Um, and tickets can be purchased for $10 on their website, and I believe if you go to the door, they also have tickets there too. Um, it's so far shaping out to be a great play again. And then 
again, Marble Newtown ice hockey concluded their season last night against Radnor, and they had a really good season. So, and that's everything from the high school. Thank you. Thanks, man. Could I ask the students a quick question? Thank you for coming out, but I wanted to ask, how can we donate to THON? Is there a link on our school website? Yes, so everybody has an individual, so everyone registered for Minithon has an individual donor drive account. Okay. So we can provide you with that link. It's also on the website. If you okay. search up um, Minithon, I can provide you. Okay, that would be great. Okay, perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Superintendent's report. Thank you. Uh, Matt, before you leave, I'm going to um, congratulate you once again. Last time you were here, you were an Eagle Scout. This time, you were accepted to West Point. So congratulations. It's really exciting. It's really exciting. Yeah. Super excited for you, Matt. You've done wonderful things. Um, definitely show your Tiger pride. It's great. Thank you so much. Yes. So um, uh, Matt and Kiria had shared a few things I was going to share as well. But um, today, uh, Dr. DiBartolomeo and myself, uh, we're able to attend the annual junior initiative. Fifteen presenters um, throughout the community were there. Some are here. And we had a great time going um, around to the different presenters. It's a really terrific experience for the juniors, and um, it's something we take great pride in. I also wanted to share that last week the band, orchestra, and color guard went to Disney World. In addition to having fun on the rides, they certainly had a behind-the-scenes uh, peek at Disney uh, with different performances and clinics to learn about leadership and um, how Disney does things. And I wanted to congratulate the mock trial. You're on mock trial too, right? Yeah, you're, you're do everything, Matt. There's nothing Matt doesn't do. So um, two weeks ago, they argued against very difficult school districts. They did a fantastic job. And two of our students were recognized for best advocate and best witness. So I wanted to congratulate the mock trial team. Our um, Middle school has started transitioning from fifth grade to sixth grade, just like the eighth graders are transitioning to the high school. So um, the administration has gone down to the fifth graders and talked to them and given them like a virtual tour. And soon they'll be preparing for them to be in person at the, at the middle school. Um, they've also been preparing their drama club and they have uh, their play is called Pure Imagination, which will be coming up at the end of the month in March. And uh, kindergarten registration opened, so we transition our new, for, for, our new kindergartners, our fifth to sixth graders, our eighth to ninth graders, and all of our elementary schools have celebrated 100th day in one capacity or another, uh, mostly in kindergarten and first grades. Everybody's doing also Read Across America this week. Um, Loomis is also doing a uh, building a penguin project. And um, we had a local dentist, Dr. Adler, come to Russell to talk to the children, the third graders, about dental health. And uh, Warl did a great job of exceeding their goal in the Jump for Heart fundraiser last week. So it was a very busy couple weeks in Marple Newtown. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Number 10, Secretary's Minutes. Is there a motion to approve items number 10 and 11 on the agenda? So moved. Second. For discussion? Yes. I have one just quick question. Can the minutes be, first of all, for my information, FAPE, the abbreviation stands for federal? Free and appropriate public No, I don't. I don't. That's why I'm asking. So can, can the minutes be reflected to... If the board doesn't object, can the minutes be reflected to use the full the full uh, title? You okay with me? Fine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. That concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Tomaski, number 12, Curriculum Instruction and Technology Committee. 12.02, is there a motion to approve the Marple Newtown School District Health and Safety Plan, including the students as presented? Technical discussion. Safety plan was previously approved August 3rd, 2022. So moved. Board discussion. All uh, in favor? Be, I would just like to, to acknowledge that this is still a requirement from the Pennsylvania Department of Education for school districts to renew their health and safety plans every six months. So our plan has been working for us, and that's why it's identical to the August as we started the year. 
Thank it's a requirement. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion approved. 12.03. Is there a motion to approve the adoption of the recommended Marple Newtown High School block schedule beginning with 2023-2024 school year as presented? So moved. Board discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion approved. 12.04. Is there a motion to approve two administrative trips as stated in the agenda? So moved. Board discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion approved. 12.05. Is there a motion to approve the three student trips stated in the agenda? Second. Board discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion approved. 12.06. Is there a motion to approve the high school clubs as stated in the agenda? Do we have a second? Second. Board discussion? I have a question. Yes. Um, item number 12.06 to approve the video production club at the high school. Are we going to be using our studio for that? I believe so. Okay. Ooh, Great. Cool. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Beautiful. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion approved. 12.07. Is there a motion to approve the 1, 2, 3, 4, Five motions under 12.07, technology. Second. Board discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion approved. That concludes my portion. Thank you, Mr. Siana. Human Resources and Policy Committee. Mr. McKenzie. Um, can I get a motion to approve agenda items 1302 through 1311? So moved. Second. Uh, board discussion, but I also want to quickly... Uh, 1308 new hires. Um, we have our new hire here for uh, Russell School, Brett Thomas. I don't know if there's any other new hires. Welcome, board. Uh, congratulations, Brett. But uh, any other discussion? Tina, you just want to? Yeah, I, I just wanted to share about Brett. Welcome, Brett. Congratulations. Um, Brett, uh, just a few fun facts. We'll, we'll, we'll share a district-wide communication, your biography tomorrow. But Brett is a, a proud Marple graduate, the class of 1996. He is an, um, an educator for 22 years. He did his bachelor's in special education and then his master's of education from St. Joseph's. We thought he was a, a terrific fit for Russell. Um, we uh, also believe at, at his last 17 years, he has been serving in the Radnor School District. Um, many of those have been in the capacity of administration. He's currently an elementary assistant principal at Wayne Elementary School. Um, and they have some of the sim similar programs that we have at Russell in that same building. So we just are super excited to welcome you home. His family is local, uh, still in Marple, and his family is with us this evening. So we're really proud to have him back. And um, there he is. And, and, and we will make arrangements for, you know, for upcoming meet and greets in the, in the, in the next couple weeks for you to really kind of get to know uh, Brett uh, and, and have conversation with you. So you'll, we'll, we'll arrange things with the parents and the staff and, and the students to get to meet you. So we're, we're excited to have you come um, and join us at Russell. I just want to thank everybody you know, through the process. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Um, any other board discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. The Budget and Finance Committee, I will read this. <clears throat> Number 14.02 is there a motion to approve the, mo is there a motion to approve the item listed under 14.02 bills for payment? Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any uh, opposed? I, I have a question about that. Mr. Maloof? So uh, my question is for our, uh, our business manager. If, um, if um, a, a member of the board or a member of the public were interested in a more detailed breakdown of those, of those it's funds, public that's, it's all public. Is that, that's published, isn't it? After the board minutes tonight are published, they're on there. Okay. They were not on their previous They're not there until after the board votes. It's after we voted to approve it. When the board approves the minutes from the following meeting. So if you went back a month, you'd see the bill list. So 
just to give a little more, there's 28 pages of bills and details for that 1.2 million, like in, in nauseating detail. And then you guys can just always call and ask us if you have questions on any of them. Yep. And that, was, that was my question. Yep. Just a comment further, the board does have that in our possession right now. So we see it before it gets published. That's a more question. That's just when that's released. The board can make changes if they want to. These are bills that have to be paid for the school district primarily, right, Joe? They're all electric. They're bills. all. It's a, it's everything. It's two hundred thousand in prescription insurance. It's. It's everything that we create, that we generate monthly. You might even see something in the summer that's like a $10 million bill list because we prepay the employee's health insurance in one lump sum for the year. So you would even see much bigger months than this because of debt service or something like that. But this is a typical uh, list with um, all of our monthly expenses to all the supplies, all the books. If you go to last month meeting minutes, you'll see all those some of those bills are repetitive. Utilities, substitute teacher service, you know, b benefits. A lot of them you'll see every single month. Some of them you may not um, because it may be one time. Could they be made public before the meeting just so we would have an idea? I think that's the right It's not my decision, so. Oh, okay. Something we would look at. Uh, we will consider it. Well, okay. I I, I, I'm not trying to be evasive. I, I really am not. Uh, if there's a sort of, uh, I, we'll, we'll consider it. It's not, it's not an, an absurd proposal. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and, and to that point, I think if you had an issue with something that was listed under the bills for payment under the way that we currently do it, after we vote on it, you, you know, certainly you're going to be able to access that and say, I've got questions about this and this and this. But as part of like, what we do to run an operation, we need to vote to approve the bills for payment. But I'll t I, I take your point, and it's something that we can, we can consider. Okay? And you can certainly go back and question. Yeah. Normally, there's not this many people in our attendance. Yeah, it's good. It's, a, we, it, yeah. it's good to have an involved community. Right. That's not a bad thing. You so, like that? Yeah. 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 So this I am. I am going to try to rein this back in. It's. A, I'm going to try to rein this back in right now. Again, we will have time for you to comment at the end of the meeting, and 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 you are invited to speak. Okay. Uh, so that was board discussion. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The ayes have it. 14.03 monthly reports. Is there a motion to approve the item listed under 14.03? So moved. Any board discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. I, there's a second motion. Is there a motion to approve the June 30th, 2022 audit report as presented? So moved. Board discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Can I get a motion to approve the items listed under 14.04 and 14.05? So moved. Second. Any board discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, that concludes the Budget and Finance Committee Report, number 15, Facilities and Transportation Committee. Thank you. Captain's get a motion for 1502 and 1503 and 1504. Is there a second? Uh, any board discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. That concludes my report. Delaware County Intermediate Unit Report, Ms. Harvey. No report the same thing. Uh, legislative report. Mr. Maloof? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. So uh, the legislative report, which is more like a judicial report tonight, um, the topic which has become priority number one at the state legislative level is the ruling of the Commonwealth Court of Pennsylvania, which was handed down earlier this month, which ruled unconstitutional, that is contrary to the Pennsylvania Constitution, the current system of school funding on the basis of locally administered property taxes. So that ruling in almost 800 pages uh, indicates that, that our current system does not fit the constitutional standard, which is, and I quote Article 3, thorough and efficient. What the Commonwealth Court did not provide was a uh, description for 
what to do next. So that remains in the state legislator, legislature's hands. Um, as we know, the composition of the state legislature was just recently settled. So, uh, and the ruling itself is likely to be appealed up to the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. Uh, but if that ruling is upheld, that could probably change the way that uh, schools are funded. So um, it's a wait and see situation. The Pennsylvania School Boards Association, whose meetings I've been listening to, they are closely following this with interest. More to come. Thank you, Mr. Relief. Board presidents report to the board. I have something that I want to get into, but first, I did want to um, acknowledge there was a question about Title IX funding. Title I. Was, Title there's one. so many titles. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Can, do you have an answer for that? I, I can, and Mr. Driscoll, please fill in the gaps for me. So schools qualify for Title I primarily because of free and reduced lunch status. Well, we had two years of free lunches for our students across the Commonwealth. So many families did not complete the paperwork because they didn't have the need because there was free breakfast and free lunch. However, at certain levels, like the high school, that status gives our high school students uh, more benefits beyond just free lunch. For instance, uh, it could help waive the laptop fee. It could help with extracurricular fees. It could help with college boards, SATs, AP exams. So our high school population families still completed the paperwork when our elementary families did not have the need. The Commonwealth did not take that into consideration, please stop me if I'm wrong, when they calculated which of our schools would um, qualify for Title I. So they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't buffer it with us. So, it, so we didn't qualify Russell School. However, we still provided supports there through the district means. So the supports are still there. We just didn't, the Title I gives us the federal funding to provide those supports. Am I correct? Can I ask a question? Because it's my understanding that we didn't, so that we lost supports after uh, reading. Okay. For questions, yeah, we have to go to the podium and, and we have to, everything has to be left. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Wait. So we know who, for record. Yeah, no problem. Sorry, this is Michelle Grant. It, it's my understanding that at Russell you did not. Thanks, Butter. Thank you. Thank you. That you did not provide the reading support staff that they had under the Title I funding. We, you did it. We have. I thought we have two aides there. Two assistants there. Your staff feels that they do not have the support that they had. That's my understanding. I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I have asked clarifying questions about this at Russell. And my understanding is that they do not have the reading support that they had in prior years. The only thing I can comment on is there may have been a reduction of one reading aid, but there were three in the building, leaving two, which the district picked up with local funds exactly. when we lost the title funds. So you're saying that the staff has been exactly the same as in previous years? No, one less, but there were still two reading, Title I reading personnel over there. Okay. Are those the people that are making $19,000 a year? I'm not sure what those people make. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So, um, obviously, we recognize there's a lot of people here tonight. Um, so, our board uh, has been asked to provide an update on contract negotiations with m and &E our teachers union. So, the first, first of all, we want to acknowledge that we have a lot of hardworking teachers. And the majority of the members of this board have or had children who are students in this district. A few of us even uh, were students of some of these teachers ourselves. And our district is committed to providing uh, and inspiring a passion for learning, personal integrity, uh, excellence in school, and social responsibility. The teacher's contract is currently up at the end of June. This past fall, our board reached out to union leadership in a proactive attempt to try to reach consensus on all of the pertinent points in order to avoid formal protracted contract negotiations. This was not successful. So in January, we began bargaining in earnest. 
and the board entered the process with the intent of developing a contract which achieves three goals, to provide fair compensation and benefits for our teachers, to ensure that our educational programs remain strong and continue to approve, and to minimize the tax burden on our residents and stakeholders. We've had two meetings so far. Contract negotiations can take time. At the first meeting, the union leadership communicated their demands. At the second meeting last week, the board presented its counteroffer. Negotiations are ongoing. We have no intention of negotiating this contract in public at this time. What we can say is that the initial offer that has been extended by the board exceeds every single settlement that has occurred between the board and the union for at least as long as all of us have been around. We recognize that there is a nationwide <clears throat> shortage of teachers, and we are willing to increase wages. But we need to be careful about unduly burdening our taxpayers. <clears throat> to that end, uh, the board's proposal provides equitable raises to all of our teachers in the district. As a policy point, we're uncomfortable with the concept of disproportionately increasing salaries of a portion of our teachers significantly more than a larger portion of those teachers. It is our goal to treat members equitably. We want to offer all of our teachers a fair raise that balances the needs, their needs, with the other significant needs of our district, of our taxpayers, and of our community. We understand that labor negotiations are tough on everyone. Um, this is very early in the process. Um, and we're encouraging everyone to be as patient as they can. We have a lot of work to do, uh, but we're willing to do it to proceed through this process. Okay. We can now open it up to comments from the audience. Well, first I have a clarifying question. Are, are you saying that some teachers are asking for a higher proportionate raise than other teachers? I, I did not say that. I can't get into that. You, you said um, you didn't want to pay a certain portion of teachers. As a policy point, that's how we feel. But are, are they asking for it? I'm not going to get into what they're asking, ma'am. I, I guess I'm very confused about why you're alleging a policy that we have no awareness that's being asked by the teachers. But I'm not, I'm not going to get into what you can certainly ask them if you would like. I'm not going to get into I, what they've asked I have talked to them. Have you? Yes, ma'am. I'm on the negotiating team. I don't understand why you're, you're taking such a tone right now. We're, I, we're all in the same community. Let me tell we you can, why. Because Mr. Talk. Bilker okay. accused me of getting all of my information on Facebook. I wasn't... In, did you I didn't not say sir? it like that. <laughs> Do you want me to pull out the email? You can. I, 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 huh? I, huh? We are all communities. We are doing this. I, I did communicate to you that that was not intended in any particular way. I, just, I wonder how you would have taken that, Mr. Belker. Uh, I, I, I don't have any social media or Facebook. I'm getting my information from speaking to our teachers. So I do apologize. I don't mean to be confrontational either. I really don't. I guess I feel frustrated because I have communicated my concerns, and to get an email back like that was offensive. It wasn't intended to offend you, and I did give you myself a number and said I'd be glad to speak to you. It, I, it, I prefer to speak here because I don't, when and, I'm spoken okay. to that way, Mr. Booker, uh, I don't trust the conversation okay. that you and I are going to have in private because you're okay. not answering any of our questions. Okay. Please continue. Of course. So I am here to express my support. That's clear for the Marple teachers during their contract negotiations. We have a third and first grader at Russell. Their teachers, support staff, and administration have been warm dedicated and kind. We've watched them work after hours and on weekends. I work for the IU myself, so I know how difficult it's been to differentiate instruction post-COVID. My children's teachers have gone above and beyond to provide the support they need to thrive. I also volunteer at Russell Weekly, so I've seen the specialist teachers take subbing positions in the school over and over again, so they don't have their prep time. They are often trying to provide their own coverage for their classes because they're subbing in the general ed population. So I was already concerned that Marple teachers are overworked and not receiving adequate prep time, but I am really shocked to learn about the salary disparity between our district and other neighboring districts. I appreciate that you are alleging that you're offering them more money, but they are not making salaries that are commiserate with districts that are neighboring. So I have a couple questions for Mr. Driscoll. It's my understanding that in 2022 you made almost $253,000. So I want to know if you're aware that you are earning about $70,000 more than business managers in our neighboring districts. I want to know if you're also aware that our teachers are making significantly less than the surrounding district's teachers with the same level of education and experience. So I would like you to comment on that, please. And I do have, if you need the information, Havertown, Springfield, Rose Tree Media, the business manager positions in those districts. 
I'd also like to know from Mr. Bilker and Mr. Driscoll if you guys have hired outside counsel to assist in these negotiations and who's paying for that. And I'd like to know from Dr. Kane, Mr. Driscoll, and the board if anyone in administration has received bonuses in the last three years. So I'd like to end by letting you know that I feel teachers in our community are overworked and underappreciated by the administration and this board. I think it's wrong that a man making a quarter of a million dollars and people that have children in our school district are uh, working so hard to underpay our teachers. I'd like you guys to change course, and I would very much like you to give teachers the compensation they deserve so we can keep Marple an excellent district to live in. Whoever would, uh, ma'am, if you, anybody yeah. who would like to speak, just as long as. You have a formal line if you. If I don't you. have much time here, so I have to get back to my kids. Um, I don't have to push this button, do I? Okay. It's green. It's green. All right. Uh, it's in response. As a parent, uh, my name's Jackie Kostak. Um, as a parent to seven children, seven district children. Currently, two graduates, one at Paxson, three at the high school, one at Aston Boat Tech. Um, I've been involved in our district for years. Uh, I'd like to recognize this board in particular for everything that they've accomplished, from the renovations at Culbertson and Loomis Elementary to the field project that's transformed our high school to a state-of-the-art facility, comparable to most colleges in the area. It's incredible. Uh, we've dedicated, we have a dedicated band practice area, and I think that what you guys have accomplished is amazing, um, including the price that it was done for. We have the lowest taxes out of any district in Delco. We're basically sending our kids to private school for the cost of, I'm sorry, yeah, we're basically sending our kids to private school for the cost of pu public school. That's a critical aspect, uh, as far as tax bill goes, that's a critical aspect of the district is the affordability. Marple is one of the most desirable communities in southeastern Pennsylvania for young families that want to educate their kids in a public school. I know that firsthand because I work with homeowners and business owners in the area. You don't have to look any further. There's no other district that can offer the educational experience that we have for the price that we're charged. As I said, as a business owner, I work with local businesses and homeowners. I'm also a licensed realtor. School taxes impact all of our family, all of our families. And in my situation, property cost affects not only myself and my family and my seven kids, it affects my clients. It's a safe district, and Marble teachers, although I realize that they face daily challenges, they're not in the same situation as some of my friends that are in high, that are teachers in higher crime rate areas. Again, that doesn't mean that they don't face dangerous situations. I respect the fact that they do, and I thank them for that. This is not a personal vendetta against any of the teachers. I am eternally grateful, believe me, to all the teachers in this district, and I think they know that. While it's necessary in some districts to factor in the equivalent of hazard pay to attract quality teachers. We don't have that issue as far as I'm concerned due to the fact that Marble Newtown has become a destination district for many educators. Um, in order to keep it that way, school taxes need to remain the way that they are. I'm thankful again to our educators and I commend anyone who sets out to earn a higher pay rate especially through an individual evaluation, increases are always acceptable. And as you said, there's an offer for increase right now. I believe that if somebody's not happy with their current salary, that you know that's to be discussed. And I think that they do, again, I believe that they do need to be compensated more. I don't agree with the hazard pay situation and if there's a way to do it without affecting my taxes or that of my clients, I'm all ears. Um, and as far as the board goes, I feel that people, 
I feel I feel that you're personally attacked for how much you make. Have you gotten your elementary school? No, I haven't. However, okay. I have seven Best children in the district. The board, so. Okay. Okay. You have seven kids in the district. Oh, That's the board, all I please. To okay. Um, okay, and I'm an educator as well. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse Thank me. You. Thank you to this board, um, and. I realize that you guys have a very hard job, and I realize that all of these teachers have a very hard job, and it's not my job to say what anyone should make. It is my job to stand up for myself and my family when it affects my pockets and the pockets of my clients, and that's all I'd like to say. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. My name is Fran Leiter. I'm a Marple resident. I moved here almost 40 years ago to send my kids to Marple Newtown schools. They're both graduates of it, as well as the fact that my husband's a graduate of the district also. I've seen many school boards come and go over the 40 years. I think that this board is doing an excellent job in balancing the interests of the school personnel, student facilities, and the tax burden on our communities. It's important that our facilities have come up to snuff because when my kids are going through school, they really, really needed to be refurbished and good to see the fields coming you know, coming to fruition and that sort of things. And I think this district has done a good job. We have to remember that a lot of Marple community is a senior citizen community and all of our parents are struggling to pay their bills. So I think that the fact that the school board is trying to keep taxes where they need to be is appreciative. And again, I think you guys have done an excellent job. Thank you. Thank you. You do. Okay, do I start that or how does it work? Is the oh, cool. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Board, Dr. Kane. Thank you for your time. My name is Allison Kelly. I'm a 15 year resident of Marple Newtown. I feel compelled to speak tonight to support the many fabulous teachers that we have at Marple Newtown School District and to provide some comparisons to the district I teach in. I've been a science teacher at Methacton School District for 20 years. Methacton and Marple are very similar in their demographics their testing scores, and being some of the lowest paid teachers in comparable school districts. About eight years ago, I started to notice that many teachers in Methacton School District were leaving for higher compensated districts. I wondered why Marple teachers weren't leaving. I didn't know, I thought they loved it. I thought they loved the community. That's the only thing that would make sense. But you know what? Teachers could only do this for so long. They're asking how long, how long does it take for the district to realize um, that I'm valuable, and do they actually, actually value me? As we've seen in the past year, a significant number of our teachers have left for better compensating jobs. They needed to do what was best for their families, their careers, and their own self-respect. This problem can be rectified. After losing an incredible amount of teachers over the past two years at Methacton and not being able to fill multiple, multiple positions, the board, the administration, realized they had to do something. This October, unprecedented, the board, the superintendent, and the union leaders agreed to ratify our contract so we were more competitive with other districts. December, um, we had a year and a half left of our current contract. It was agreed that it was necessary to increase our salary, not a lot, but enough, just this December. Money was added throughout the contract, but significantly to the bottom to attract newer teachers and to the top to retain teachers. At the end of this contract, which was extended through 2025-2026 school year, teachers at the top will see approximately a $10,000 increase compared to what they were getting with the existing contract. I know that $10,000 does seem like a big number, but it will only begin to make us competitive with districts in our area, whereas other districts like Lower Marion, Radnor, Haverford are at least $10,000 additionally on top of that. Methacton's teacher attrition has slowed since our contact has been ratified. Significantly increasing teacher salary is the only way to ensure Marple Newtown can attract and sustain the highest quality teachers. My son is in eighth grade at Paxton Hollow. I have a first grade daughter at Russell. It is my hope that my daughter will have the opportunity to have such wonderful teachers as Dr. Mano, uh, Mrs., Mrs. Gardner, and Mr. Vlahos, just to name a few. They have done so much to encourage my son's love of learning and have fostered his self-confidence. School board members, Dr. Kane, I hope you will support the children of Marple Newtown School District by negotiating a contract in June that respectfully compensates our teachers. 
Our kids deserve this. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for that comment. My name is Jack Alden. I had the privilege of standing before you twice before, and I thank you for your time in advance. I'm here uh, as a father of two children in the school district. One's at Russell in first grade. One is at Culbertson in the second grade, who's a special needs student. When I introduced myself last spring, early summer, I'll let you folks know that my family uh, comes from a long line of educators. What I didn't tell you then, I'll tell you now. My grandmother received her degree in teaching in 1924 from the State Teachers College in Rhode Island. She was one of the first female teachers in the state. She gave birth to teachers, conversely, other teachers. And here I stand before you tonight asking you to consider your future. Yes, your future as teachers, as board members, as members of a proud community. A community that I am proud to be a part of. People who fight, people who are gonna stand up. Common sense will tell you that all of you and all of us here are on the same page. We want what is right. We want to keep the best teachers possible. Personally, I have seen two of my special needs daughters teachers leave. Uh, for various reasons that are their own. Um, I would like to think that their service would be paid commensurate with other school districts. Now, special needs teachers, for those of you who do not know, they're entitled in a collection, a collective bargaining agreement to ask for more money, right? You can ask for anything in good faith. Law well, in the state of Pennsylvania says that's feasible. The law in the state of Pennsylvania also says, pursuant to the school code, section 11, slash 1142, that for each year of service, now this is statutory, affirmed in case law, each year of service for a teacher justifies one step. In other words, a teacher who's been here for 10 years should be on step 10. Now I know of teachers who have been here eight years and on step six. Now, you cannot, in a collective bargaining uh, agreement, negotiate anything less that is required by law. The law is very clear. The case, is, the, the case law is clear, right? So let's start from that, from that common ground and work up. Whatever the fee is, whatever their increase is, has to be equitable, and, and so many variables come into play. But let's recognize the people what they're worth. There shouldn't be someone in Marple Newtown who's been here eight years on a step six. You could justify it and say, well, we're going to have each step equal two years. You can't. One year, one step. That's the law. And there's, there's no question about it. So make it fair. Make it where the people are comfortable and they want to stay. I don't care about hazardous pay. I care about teachers. I am from a family of teachers. These teachers shape the foundation of who we are. Dr. Kane, you recognize this outstanding gentleman who was accepted to West Point, who participated in the mock trial. I could tell you, as someone who served in the United States Navy for 10 years and who was a lawyer in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I applaud you. You are a product of all these people, all of these teachers, your family, people who motivate, people who stand here and fight. This is the good fight, and I thank you for your time. I'm Ingrid T. Um, I just wanted to um, put out there, I did quick research today, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but where our money is going, some of it. Um, I don't know if we really need to raise taxes for um, the teachers, but if that is, I, I mean, there's a whole city being built in Newtown Square, so I don't know where that money is going either. Mm -hmm. However, 
In 2016, I have a comparison of a teacher who's been here for 25 years and our business manager who's been in the district for 30 years. So pretty even. In 2006, the teacher got a 0% raise. The business manager, 4%. You might want to write these down so you can look at them. 2017, teacher got 2.4%. Business manager, 4.25%. 2018, 2% for the teacher, 4.25% for the business manager. 2019, 0.3% for the teacher, business manager, 7.6. In 2020, 0.5% for the teacher, 6.4% for the business manager. In 2021, the teacher was told they were going to freeze it. Business manager got 4.71%. In 2022, the teacher got 0.7%, and the business manager got 4.88% raise. We just hired an assistant for the business manager for $130,000. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's more than any of our teachers will make the whole time they live here, work here. The aides who deal with our special ed and our programs, $20,000 they start at, half of what most do. So how are we not taking care of our teachers as much as we are taking care of the administration? And then I have a question. Last week it was said that um, Mr. Larkin was up for retirement. Does that mean he was working after he killed somebody and left the scene of the accident? He was still working? And are we paying now for his retirement package? Did he get a retirement package? And is that where our tax money is going? There was a teacher who was accused of being a little pervertish. And until the kids put it on social media, he was let go immediately, no questions. The bus driver that was caught for um, videotaping girls, um, he just pled guilty, I think, this week. Uh, he was let go immediately. But a man who kills a guy on the side of the road and then drives around and asks, oh, what's going on, a big accident, still worked in our district and was allowed to retire? And we're paying for that? So then I was wondering why. His father, is this true that his father's the head of Gallagher where we do get the teacher's benefits? And we pay him $45,000 consultation fee? How often does he consult? Are we paying for Mr. Larkin? Is anybody going to answer that? For, for the consulting fee? No. No, he's not. I don't, I don't believe there's any anything post-termination. Anyone who works for the district and is tenured after 10 years, that's the section they're in, we can retire, but it's not the district paying the retirement. It's the state but why retirement system. why was he able to retire rather than get fired, Because he, go. he's allowed to retire. You can allow him to speak. He could, have, it could resign. It could have, but you're allowed to retire. If you're eligible to receive a retirement from the Pennsylvania State employees retirement system, you can retire. The district's not paying anything. It already has. And he has for been every working employee. since that. He hasn't been getting paid since that accident? Since February, no, since when since his termination date, February 1st. So we paid him after the accident up until he was then. Working. That's my question. He was an employee. Well. All right, thank you. Thank you. I, have, I don't have anything fancy prepared. I just want to express my um, concerns. Uh, if you remove for a second, and I'm so sorry, guys, but if you remove the teachers aside, I'm sorry, push the button. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Marilia, M A R I L I A. Mancini, M-A-N-C-I-N-I. -I. I live in Brumall and I have two kids, a uh, 10-year-old and 6-year-old at Worrell, which I love very much and I love, love, love to keep all the teachers there because they are 
amazing. Um, and we're trying to keep you too. So <laughs> working hard for that on that. So if you take the teachers aside, the reason we came to Marple, uh, moved to Marple about eight, nine years ago, is one, the school district, and two, is the community, right? So to me, and I'm Brazilian, come to the US, I wanted to provide the best education for my kids, go move to a school district, uh, a, a place that has a nice school district and a community. To me, what dictates what a good neighborhood is, is a school, that, uh, the public school. So if you think about Radnor, if you think about Mainline, if you think about the surrounding Havertown, we have good school districts, right? We wanna go there and we wanna provide the best for our children. Thus, is a desirable rate neighborhood for everybody to live, thus the house prices increase, thus everybody pays more, there's everybody pays their taxes, and I'm sorry, I have parents at your, you know, older age that are also retired, understand the tax uh, implications, but it's a neighborhood that everybody wants to leave. So if our teachers start leaving, we hire teachers that is not as good as the one that we lost, our school district start going lower, and that guess what happens to our house? Thank you very much. So thinking about in the future, I'm not just thinking about immediate, but thinking about the future and the, the value of our house, the value of our, our neighborhood, and the value of our community goes down as well with it. I'm thinking about my kids and the future of my kids. So I appreciate it. And, and I mean, it's a shame that we all need to be here to express our, our, our voices. And I really, really, really hope you guys can take that and into consideration very well and not just brush it off uh, going forward to have this, you know, taking that into consideration because it's really concerning. And we'll be, we'll be around. We'll be around. Any other public comment? Okay. Any comments from the board? All right, folks, we can adjourn.